How to record audio using GarageBand for Mac OS is part of a series of demonstrations of material found on the CEL Open Resource Repository. Tools we will explore in this brief presentation includes creating basic narrated audio using GarageBand 10 and uploading that audio into Learn. GarageBand is audio editing software developed by Apple that is intuitive and easy to use for anyone who wants to create and edit audio recording materials. The full range of GarageBand's capabilities exceeds the intent of this short demonstration, where we will focus specifically on narrated voice recording. Some quick recording tips. Your environment is quite important, so be sure that you select a carpeted room or a room that has a large area rug. And if you do not have a room with either of those things, you can throw down some pillows or some comforters onto the floor. The purpose of this is to dampen any additional echo that may be coming from your room. Eliminate all background noise. This includes ceiling fans, pets, other people. Try to select a time of the day when there's less noise traffic in your house. All electronic devices, including cell phones and tablets, etc., mute or power off any additional devices. For software and accessories, GarageBand 10 is the most recent version of GarageBand available on macOS, and that is the version that I am demonstrating today. We do recommend that you use an external microphone rather than the integrated microphone that comes with your machine. The reason for this is that as you start to record your audio, the fan will likely kick in and that could interfere with the quality of your recording. So we're going to go ahead and get started recording a file and we do this by creating a new voice project. When you first open up GarageBand, you're going to want to select a project template, voice, and then hit choose. And that opens up our new project. There are going to be a couple of additional settings we'll explore before we set to record, one of them being the metronome. So let's go ahead and explore that now. So when you open up this new project, a number of different areas of your window can be seen here. So we're started with five new tracks. We have our recording settings in the bottom over here and some additional settings for voice over here. Most recording is going to be done on a singular track, so we don't need to have all of these additional tracks. So we're going to go ahead and delete these additional tracks. And the one I'm most interested in is narration vocal. And the reason for that is it produces the clearest sound without additional interference or background noise or special effects that can be quite distracting for students. I do want to draw your attention down to this control section over here. Notice how when I change any of these settings, those controls also change. Because we know that the narration vocal setting is the highest quality one to use, we want to make sure that this is out of the way so that it doesn't accidentally get clicked and we change our settings mid-recording. Before I minimize that panel, I want to direct your attention over here to the microphone settings. In my case, I'm using using an external microphone, so I've set that here, and I'm going to go up into my preferences, and I'm going to click on Audio MIDI, and for my output, if I'm using headphones, I would select those here. I'm selecting my built-in output because I want you to be able to hear some of the recording in this presentation. My input device, there's several different settings here. That is correctly set, and my microphone is set here. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this control panel so I don't inadvertently hit any of those buttons and change my narration settings. Additionally, we want to make sure a couple of other settings are turned off. One of them is the metronome. If I was to record with the metronome on, it's going to create these very annoying clicks. So that's why we want to make sure that that is disabled. So it should not be purple, it should be gray. The other thing is this cycle button over here. We want to make sure that this is not turned on because every single time we set recording and then we record again, it's going to record over the segment that you had previously recorded. The other thing that you will notice that it does here is it just keeps going and looping over and over and over for the cycle settings that had been set. We're gonna make sure that that is disabled. And the last setting, we're not recording music over here, so beats, 
bar tempo and measure this is not important for us so we're just going to go ahead and select time because time is something that we will want to focus on we do have some recommendations for duration of audio materials and of course you can learn more about that by visiting our keep learning website so to start recording, as you've noticed before, you use the record button to stop, you use the stop button, and of course we have rewind, fast forward, and play for reviewing our audio. When you start to record, try to leave a little bit of a pause at the beginning. The reason you do this is to make sure that you don't get any unwanted cutoff at the beginning of your audio. So we're going to hit start. And now I'm going to start speaking and notice I have this lovely gap at the beginning and my waveform indicates that I am getting some sound recording captured here so that's also very good and it isn't going too far up or to the top or the bottom doing that would indicate that there's some distortion in my audio and that is definitely not a good sign your settings over here indicates how loud the recording is coming in and the colors here are also a very, very good indication of how healthy the sound quality is. If it's green, it's good. If it's too far over here, we're probably a little bit too quiet. If you start seeing yellow or even red, then that indicates that you may be recording on a volume that is too high and you're going to want to reset that so that you don't have any distortion. So now that I have finished recording again, we're going to want to leave a pause at the end before we stop. And now that we have finished our recording, let's review what it sounds like. And now I'm going to start speaking and notice I have this lovely gap at the beginning. Now you'll notice that I am getting some yellow over here and you'll remember when I turned this up earlier that I turned it up a little too high. So that's something to watch for when you're recording your audio. However, when I did play this, it didn't sound like it was getting distorted. So that's, that's also very good. And it, Distortion is generally when you start to hear some buzzing interfering with the sound quality. So you do want to try to avoid that. When you're saving your audio file, there are two formats that you're going to be working with. Number one is the GarageBand project file. And when you go to export your audio to distribute in Learn or include in other materials, you're going to want to export it to an MP3 format, which is a nice compressed web-friendly format. To do this, we're going to be exporting the song to disk and the optimal setting is medium quality at 128 kilobytes per second. So to do that, we save our file. So I'm going to call this one test project May and it's saving all of the audio tracks that we have created. Now to export to mp3 we are going to select share export song to disk. Because I'm going to be saving this on the web I'm going to want to avoid using spaces so I'm going to go test project May. That looks good. Now I'm going to want my mp3 button selected when you select quality, you'll notice there's a number of different settings. We recommend that you select medium quality. Low quality is going to be distorted. If you select high quality or highest quality, the only thing you're going to do is increase your file size. You're not going to get any noticeable quality difference for narrated audio. We're going to go ahead and export it. And it's converting it to MP3. And now we're ready to go ahead and get this uploaded to learn. So let's explore how we do that. Now that we're in our course in learn, we're going to want to select course admin, manage files, and that's going to bring up our directory tree of all of the materials that are included in our course. In my case, I'd like to organize all of my different file types by folder. All of my media files includes my audio files, which are right up here. I select audio and now I'm going to select my upload button. And here is my test project MP3 file. So I'm going to choose that. It's very quick to upload because it's nice and small. And we're going to save that. And now we're going to add it into our course materials. So there's a number of different ways that you can do that, whichever works best for you. 
you can add it directly to your table of contents. In my case, I have organized a number of different sections. I have this example page with audio. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to replace the audio file that I have here. So I'm going to edit HTML. So there's two ways that you can add audio to your page. You can link it or you can embed it. So in my case, I want to link and embed. So for the first one, I insert a quick link, browse to the directory where I saved my file in media, audio, test project may file. I'm going to select the pencil icon, give it a proper name. So we called this one test project may. And for my link, I'm going to make sure that it is opening up in a new window. And I'll demonstrate why that is when we test the HTML file after we've saved it. Now for our embedded audio, I'm going to add the new one directly below this one. Select the insert stuff button up here, browse to our course offering files, media, audio, and then test project may is right here. Select next, put in some link text, test project may. Do not select start playing automatically, particularly if you have a number of different audio files on the page. It can be quite disconcerting to students when they first launch a page and sound starts coming out, especially if their speakers were already set very loud. Insert it and we see that it's one minute and 11 seconds. And that's another reason why I wanted to embed it here because I wanted to get the timestamp to show you how we can indicate how long audio is going to be if we're choosing to link it. So we've said that this is an audio file. We can also do that by saying MP3. So they know it's an MP3 audio file and we want to put the correct timestamp here. This is one minute and 11 seconds. The other way that you can do that is you can round up to the nearest minute. So in my case, that's two minutes. And so that's that. Now we're going to go ahead and save and close this. And I'm going to show you the difference between embedded audio and linked audio. So if I've linked my audio and I've told it to open up in a new tab, It'll give me this nice play bar and here start speaking. And, I and it automatically starts to play. At the beginning. If you're embedding it, the player shows up just like this nice little gray bar and it doesn't automatically play. And we can just go ahead and play it. And now I'm going to start speaking and notice right directly on your page materials. If you have any questions about the materials presented in this video, visit the CEL Open Resource Repository. If you require direct support developing your online course, please reach out to us at remote teaching at uwaterloo.ca.